Okay, welcome everyone. So excited about today, as always. Got a brand new little box, one of Amazon's. Wow, thank you for the florals. Must be Randall. <laughs> welcome, Randall. You're at work today, but you're fast. <laughs> thank you. Well, that's a beautiful way to start the, the class, so thank you. So it's a brand new treasure box today, yay. And we're going to do an under the sea seascape type of a thing. And we're going to use spackling and we're gonna make coral and cliffs and have little bright colored fish and bright colored coral. So it's going to be very lively, very bright. And I think it's gonna be really pretty. So, I'm gonna start off today just welcoming everybody and thanking you right off the bat for all the special gifts, the hearts, the tapping on the screen, the likes, and the shares, and really appreciate it all. And so if I miss anybody, I'm sorry, I'm going to be painting. <laughs> and also I put uh, this back here. This is where my YouTube channel is, Cape Charles Art in case you don't subscribe. Um, that way if you miss anything or like I get halfway finished but I say I finish it afterwards, I will post that to this Cape Charles art on YouTube. And that way you can just go back and watch at your leisure, maybe while you're painting or something like that. Thank you so much. You guys, if you don't follow Randall yet, <laughs> follow paintings by Randall. He's the oil, the oil painter. <laughs> I call him Picasso. Um, he does lives and doesn't mind if you ask questions or anything. And I just absolutely love that. So, cause we're all here as an art community, as an art tribe, and we all help each other out. So he's a good guy to follow. Follow him if you don't already. Hey, Big Sky and Crawler, welcome. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is put on some gloves. I will, of course, be working with unicorn spit, but I'm also mixing in some acrylic. Um, and I'm going to start with putting gesso down on the box. And the reason is because it gives it more teeth for the paint to hang on to. And my reason today is because I'm using the unicorn spit it's just a gel stain, so it doesn't have its own acrylic, it doesn't have its own teeth <laughs> to hang on to. So I'm gonna just mix that in with the gesso. And um, I'm not sure which colors I want, but I, I do want it bright enough to see everything under the sea. Um, and then I'm gonna mix some dark blue, some navy blue in with that Zia Teal. And then I'm just gonna mix that in with my gesso. And I'm just basically trying to get a couple different shades of maybe some blues and with my white my white gesso. And I'm just going to put it all over not worried about what it looks like right now. I just want to get a nice coverage down for the entire box. This is going to be a 360. This uh, is going to be a fun one because whenever you do a, an entire 3D box, you get so many different paintings. You know, you get the front, the top, the sides. <laughs> you can even do the bottom. <laughs> I've done the bottom. It's just fun. And you can make each one a different scene if you want. You don't have to make it all cohesive. Like what I'm thinking is I'm going to be putting sand right down here so that when you're looking at it, you're seeing the sand and maybe a pathway or whatever, and there's gonna be coral. I'll just keep painting as I talk coral and seaweeds and stuff coming up the sides. And then when you get here and want some spackling to make some more coral and some more cool stuff. Maybe some like clownfish, like I was talking to Sherry today and I was thinking, you know, in a treasure box this small, it's difficult to really get in there and give some 
details. So if we can find things that just by the shape or the color, people recognize it in their head, like a clownfish or a seahorse, maybe a sea turtle, things that aren't that technical and yet they're very recognizable. Might be a good thing for something like this. Just a thought, you do you, as always. Don't care if it's all streaky. Water gets streaky anyway when the light comes through and there's different shadows. So that's okay. Don't worry about that. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Randall. Hey, Sherry. What we are doing, Charles Hall, is we are making a under the sea treasure box. We make treasure boxes here. Tuesdays and Thursdays, that's what we do. Here's one that's finished. Um, we just make a variety of different, different styles and different boxes just never know oh y'all remember when i quit on my celebration box i just wanted to show you that i did add a couple people i'm still working on them she's very very skinny <laughs> but anyway um i added a couple people i like the little toddler all excited and pointing to the explosions so i'm on to something i'm much happier with it and um i will be working on this i won't throw it away <laughs> So oh, there's that. And here's another treasure box, my little fisherman guy, catching his catch. This one was cool because I had issues because I forgot how tall I had set him up and when I opened it, it fell back onto his head. So I had to come up with a solution to stop the box from opening all the way and that's what I did. I put rocks on the back kill my finger but it was it's neat because every time you create a treasure box you find areas that you have to work through some problems some sort of puzzle you know and um, it's fun so that's what we do here so thanks for asking though thank you Twilight Cascade oh thank you yeah, the additions actually ended up to be one of my favorite parts of that box is spin it around and I liked it. So yeah, that's cool. And that's what happens a lot. You know, it sounds like Bob Ross, happy accidents, but seriously it is. <laughs> so, all right, let's get started. I'll just leave my gloves on for a minute. I gotta spit my gum out. Sorry. Okay, here we are. So the first thing I want to do is I want to get some sand and I want to get ground. So I am want mine so far in my head. I just want some sand coming up and showing that we're going to go deep into the box, right? A deep perspective is what we want. So I'm going to put some sand in and then I'm going to put a little bit more dark at the top, um, which sounds kind of backwards because you would think the light would be coming down from the top, but there will be light, but just not, not all over. So, but my dark is gonna be navy still. I wanna keep it in the blues, not so much on the black side, black scale, blue scales. Grat, you guys, you're all so talkative. I just love that. Love you people. What a cool art tribe we have here. Okay, that's my yellow my folk art Dijon. And I'm just gonna mix that in with some unicorn spit. And remember, um, it is a gel stain, so it doesn't have the polymer in it, but if you're mixing it into your acrylics really well, then it's just gonna blend right into your acrylic and it will hang on. So this will be resined anyway, but um, I don't want any accidents that, you know, things are falling off of it, or flaking off, chipping off, anything like that. No good. So what I've got is my 
my brown spit and my Dijon acrylic and I'm just mixing it into a very hideous sand color. And you know, I've put the light blue down and it's still wet, so it may be green, but that is really actually a very cool color under the sea. Don't worry if you're doing like messing up on the bottom. I'll add just a little bit more of that darker brown right here. Don't worry about actually drawing on it right now. You're just putting, blocking in your colors where your sand is. And then you can put like seaweeds and corals and everything coming up out of that. But just go ahead and, and put some base down of some sort that it's going to be sitting into. I'm just gonna come all the way up my box now. Lots of sand. I want lots of things in there. I'm dipping some brown into the blue because I want it darker. So that's what happened when I did that and I really, really like that. So I'm gonna put a few dark shadows here and there, just not making any sense. I just don't want it all the same color, one flat color, I want highs and lows. I do like that dark brown and blue combo. I'm gonna add something here with that. No rhyme or reason, I'm just putting color on. And it's gonna be difficult to try and figure out how we're going to look at this. And like my sand in the very front of the box coming all the way up. So if I turn it here, then that's just not right because someone's gonna see this, right? So either I have to let it start falling down or bring this up or maybe just start putting some plants and coral over here. But I'm gonna go ahead and finish sand all the way around the box for now. What's pretty is when you're doing these, you can also just go ahead and put some actual sand on there when you're getting close to being finished and that's always a nice touch. I love seeing texture of any kind on a treasure box. I think it adds a lot to it. I'm not coming very high with the sand in the back. I'm thinking that may just disappear. <laughs> I don't know, we'll see. Just give some idea of sand, but I'm leaving it very very much more blue. Very much more blue. Just kind of blending it in. Kind of gives it the idea of, you know, high and low sand, little things. Something's going on. Dips and stuff. Just by doing little different colors. Dijon. So our next treasure box, <laughs> I know, I haven't even started this one really and I'm talking about the next one, but it's because I love doing them and they are the geode boxes where you get your little crystals and all of your shiny and the whole box ends up looking like a geode top that's been sliced. Those are fun and everybody that sees them, loves them. So that's a good thing. If you sell your art, you may want to know that. Geode boxes, or treasure boxes, or a hot item. And start playing around with that. We use spackling or a epoxy sculpt when we do those, just so you know. Um, and we will be using spackling today. And the spackling that I'm using is the fast Spackling, you can get anywhere, Walmart, um, Dollar General, anywhere like that. So, okay, I want a bigger brush because I'm just going over and over. Okay. I'll put some more blues up at the top. 
remember to try and keep the orientation where you know you know the front is so that you know you're painting it the right way so you don't have to re-drill holes or repaint something just some darks here and there just skipping around um, it doesn't have to be one color it can be any color you want whatever whatever colors you like to see put that in there it'll be fun Okay, so on the side, this is where the top is going to marry the, the bottom and I'm still not sure what to do. So I'm just throwing some blues in here and there. And I think as, you know, as we get closer to actually coming along with a design on this treasure box, then we'll know how far down the water is or how far up the sand is and all that. So that'll be easier. Okay, so here's the question. Here's your sand and your latch to the treasure box is right there. So do we keep going up and have more sand or do we put the water right here? See what I'm saying? and let that be where we kind of enter the watery part of the painting. And I'm thinking that might be kind of nice. I think so. I can still put some sand in. Put a little bit with some blue. Let's see what that looks like. I want it to be able to go back far, you know, looking down through it. It's darker. get some black oh thank you buffalo that is so sweet gosh you guys are the best so let me add some black to this little rock thing I've got going I just put some darker brown so I want to add some black and I've got brown in my brush, it's unicorn spit, and I'm just tapping it. I'm not really creating anything in particular. I just want some different color and some high and low. So just giving the idea that something's going on, we don't even know what, it doesn't matter. It's going to be something. So this could be a very cool coral piece if I wanted to put spackling up here. I'm going to try and stay away from spackling on the side. Um, if I was going to put some texture on this the side of this particular box, I would probably use the, um, what is that, epoxy sculpt because it'll hold on whether it's resin or not. Now the spackling, if you put it on the side, you spray it really, really well, put it on wet, maybe with some glue in it. But if you put it on the top, then that's fine because you can resin the top. You can actually resin the side too. It's just a hassle to do each side of the top and the bottom. So I don't like to do that much. I put my sand all the way across, all the way up. Weird, we'll see. Okay, 
So I like this so far. Um, it just, it gives me something to build on. All of the dark colors and the different little textures made with the different colors of the end of the brush really kind of gives you some foundation to think, okay, I can put a plant there or maybe a little seahorse is hiding back here over here on this side, which that would be cute, we'll do that. So, but for right now, let's do the bigger sections. My brush, wash off my brush a little bit. And now I wanna get some darker colors, some pretty ones, some blue and orchids. And I want it to be, you know, lively. This is, what is this? Blue Thunder of the Unicorn Spit Stain Gel. And we'll do the Purple Hill Majesty, purple. Is your sand, beach, or the bottom of the ocean? Good question. It is the bottom of the ocean. There's no beach, there's no sky, we're all underwater. Thanks for asking. We are going snorkeling. Here we go. So, a dip blue, purple, white. And I'm just gonna start doing something like this. And just come over the edge with it. Even if you take it out later, that's okay. Come over the side. It doesn't have to look like anything right now. Now I want to take something very bright. Let's see, what else do we have? We have this ink. I'll use the ink. Something very bright. I didn't mix it up very well. And you see I'm just tapping it along. Just given the idea that maybe it's coral, maybe it's some sort of sea flower. Take it down over the edge. And if you want, you can take it off to the side. I think I'm not going to on this one. I've already done it on this side. I wanna take that pink and turn it with the blue and see what I get when I do that. That's pretty. Now all of this can end up going away just as easily as you put it on. So don't be afraid. Like right now, it's like I'm taking over the entire box. Don't care. <laughs> so what? <laughs> I can take it back, you know? I just, I need to get some ideas down. And the things I like will stay and the things I don't will end up going. So remember the latch is going to be right there. I am using your basic blending brush. The little filbert or whatever it is, the, um, can you see it? It's rounded at the tip. It's fuzzy, soft, and rounded, tapered. It's the same I use for my clouds. <laughs> Okay, so right here is very dark, so I wanna just tap in some lighter color in some sort of shape, like some other plant maybe growing. And we will put some wildlife and, is it wildlife under the sea? I don't think so. <laughs> oh, I don't think that's right. I don't have any green on there yet. And we're under the ocean. There should be seaweed. It's okay. It's all right. I 
I'm just coming back across this part. I don't like it going out quite that high. So I'm taking some of that out just by running it over with a wet brush, running it over. Now, if some of it stays, I don't have to take it all the way off. Like some of the shadowy parts, might wanna leave that because it looks like you're looking deeper into the water. I'll show you in a sec, hold on. And it's like, okay, so there's stuff still way in the back that you really can't make out. So that's cool. I just added a little bit of black onto my brush for things like that, for shadows. So I've got my shadows in the back and now I'm gonna take a fan brush and get it a little damp. Put it in some blues whatever watercolors I want up there. And just see what happens when I just run it across. That's kind of cool. I'm gonna change gloves and then I'm gonna just pat this with a little bit of wax paper. Sea life, yes, Gretemus. Geodes. Geodes is for our next box. Uh, yeah, definitely going to do a geode treasure box. I wish I had one here to show you. Um, every one of my geodes treasure boxes sold quickly. So whenever I find something like that, it's like, that's a good thing to know because sometimes you don't care if it's not selling and other times it's like you want to get some more products <laughs> so you need to make a sale <laughs> so if you can find something thank you oh that's beautiful thank you so much oh, thank you so much i appreciate that oh you have geodes randall appreciate the floral garland yeah, Buffalo, I'm telling you. We used to go geode hunting in Bishop, California. I don't know if you've ever done that before, but it's kind of cool. Okay, so what I got is I gloves back on and right over these flowers where I put the water and I just ran that over. I'm gonna see if I can pick some of that blue that I just put down back up by rubbing over my pink flowers. And it may not work. It may end up, you know, messing it up or not doing anything. I don't know, but I'm gonna try. And I'm gonna do the same with these blue that I want more in the foreground. So I'm basically trying to take off that brush stroke that I just put all the way across just those two sections. The rest, I'm leaving. We'll see, see what happens. Okay, so it did take off some, and the part that it didn't, I don't mind. It just seems kind of watery. And we'll be going over this like a gazillion times anyway, but um, I, I'd rather have some oranges and stuff like that, that color in here. So I think I'm gonna get a corn spit now, right at the top with white. Just bring it in, bring it on down. Just brushing it across. Some of those things I'm losing and some are staying, those little shadows in the background, that's fine. I can always put more things in later, little additions. Okay. So right here, I just want some more dark. Kind 
of like a land mass of some sort going on. And somewhere around here too. I want to I want to break up that purple. If you ever got a a big chunk that you don't like, it's too much, you can just cut it wherever you want to cut it with a dark color. And then what you'll do is you make that some section of sand and dirt, whatever. And that's going to come up That'll kind of draw you in past that pink, right? You're kind of looking back into here now. I am. <laughs> I don't know if you are. But now it's like, does the front work with that? See, it's just such a puzzle. It's, it's very cool. So there's that, and I, I do like that. Man, that light's harsh. And then there's the front. So it kind of works, kind of doesn't. I think the reason it doesn't is because there's nothing here. Um, so maybe some seaweed, some fish, something like that. But I, I kind of like it. Aw, thank you. <laughs> it's nice to wear floral headbands occasionally. <laughs> you gotta try it. <laughs> yeah, so that's, that's cool. I like that. And I'm just gonna blot out some of that real dark. Okay, so it's kind of like a little cave going in there somewhere. So that's, that's cool, I like that. All of this is just trial and error, guys. Okay, let me get the dark colors off of my brush and start looking towards the back a little bit more. Um, so what I'm thinking is if we put some spackling Somehow, let me think. I want to be able to see through this and see this design. So let's break out the spackling and see what happens. This is fun. Everything else will just eventually come together, but I want to get the spackling part laid out. Oh, thank you. Hey, Mama Dawn. Welcome, Twilight Cascade, thank you so much. You guys are awesome. This looks like it needs to be stirred. Oh boy, doesn't this look fun? Look at you guys. <laughs> this is, oh, don't you love being an artist? Oh my gosh, we just get to play. <laughs> it's awesome. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pick it up and decide where I want some texture. And let me think. You got to remember this box is going to be opened up. I will have resin on the bottom, so it'll help balance as far as the weight if I add a lot of stuff onto the top. This is lightweight though, so it's it's a cool thing. So, okay, so what I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna put the spackling on it right here. Just cover up my flowers. I can put more flowers in later. No rhyme or reason on the spackling, just getting it down. Don't really want to come over the edge, but I could. Now, when you come close to the front of the treasure box with your spackling, you want it nice and thin I do. I don't know. You may have a different design in your head, but I want it nice and thin. But I do want this top part thicker. 
because that's where I want to do most of the um, little divots and holes and whatever it is that's in this, either rock or coral or whatever this is going to be. I don't know yet. But I really think I need a bridge. So I'm gonna do that. I'm just gonna take some more spackling. You're welcome. <laughs> just playing in it, right? Too fun. <laughs> That's the worst shape. Okay, whatever. Let me get a couple weird uh, tool things here. Hold on. Let me see if I can. As this spackling dries, it gets easier to work with. There's a point where you're done, but but like when it's all sticking up and sticking to you and everything, it makes it kind of hard. I also put another little rock over here somewhere. And you know, after the speckling dries, you can sand it down a little. You can paint it, do anything you want with it. covered up all of my pink flowers. It's gone. I'm gonna dig a hole out right here. Just with the tip of your little palette knife. And now I want it to make it look not so much like a exact circle. So just tapping it down with some wet uh, water on, wet water on this brush. Just trying to decide what it's actually going to look like here. Now some of this I want to pretend that there is some greenery coming up, but I also want the greenery to be part of the spackling, but I just want it separate from the rock. So what I'm trying to say is inside what you're making as the rock, inside of that, you can start shaping more lines of seaweed or coral or something using that same spackling that you've got. So you you get the rock and the florals and whatever else you want to dig in there <laughs> before it sets up. Just give it some options. And I'm going to go really, really flat right here. I don't like that on the side. make this rock start farther back. Just didn't like it being right at the edge like that. So I'll push it back just by taking it off from the front, exposing some of those pinks. And now let me put a little bit more sand back in. And this is 
this is how it is for me. It's on, it's off, it's on, it's off. Now check this out. This is the fun part of playing this spackling. You can actually paint it while it's still wet. And it makes really cool colors, very mossy colors. I'm just tapping with whatever colors I have left on my brush just to get some colors in there to get started. You guys are so awesome. I'm just going to blend in some blue right into that spackling, just pull it across, who cares. I just like to experiment with different mediums and different colors, different brushes and tools. Just never know what you're going to find when you do that. It's just amazing. Some things work out like, oh my gosh, that's awesome. And others is like, what was I thinking? <laughs> but that's all part of it. That's the part I love. <laughs> it's like, you never know. I'm just going to mush this in and create sand right there with some of the spackling and the end of my brush. Basically, you just want something textured. You can fix it later. You can add colors and different corals, like neons. But you just want that spackling down and drying so you can keep going with the rest of it. <laughs> Basically. Okay, that's all blues. Let me get a charcoal in there. Something about charcoal um, I love. Add some ink in that, some yellows, maybe. Nice and mossy. And I'm just putting some darker around the edges down below where there might be some shadows just for right now. Brighten that up a little bit, add us, add us a little bit of white. I need to see the front of my box. Always just kind of keep going back and forth, checking different things. Let me put this spackling lid on. I'm just dropping some yellow on and some blacks. 
whatever color, I don't care, just anything. Just something for color of any sort, here and there. You can always go back and change it. Just take the end of your brush, this is what I do, those little tiny cheapy square flat brushes. Love those brushes. Nothing special, just the edge is perfect. <laughs> just perfect. And I'm just brushing underneath my little tunnel, whatever that's gonna be, my little bridge, just brushing up underneath of it, clearing out kind of a path where I might want a fishy to be going swimming later. It's really mush around very easy right now. It's very wet. So it's good. It's also scary because it can slide on you pretty good. But hey, we're in the beginning of the thing, so it doesn't matter. Anywhere you just want to kind of form it, just use the edge of a damp brush and just slide it into it. And it'll back that spackling up really good. Maybe this should come out a little bit before it goes back. That's an interesting start. Yeah, I'm liking it already. Yay! <laughs> Tell you, Tuesday was a rough one. Randall is sweet. He was like, are you all right? <laughs> it's like, I told him, uh, you know when you, you're doing something and you just keep trying and keep trying and it's just like, nope, no, 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 no. That's what was happening on Tuesday. And you know, you're doing it in front of God and everybody. <laughs> Just like, and I don't know what I'm doing. Now look at the yellow. Um, so yeah, it was rough, real rough, but it was sweet. He was like, are you okay? I'm like, yeah, I'm fine. It's just like, you know, doing gymnastics, falling off the balance beam in the middle of a competition is what it felt like, you know? It hurts on so many different levels <laughs> all at the same time. Anyway, but I don't care. I mean, that's part of art and, you know, I'm gonna mess up. I mess up all the time. I, I tell everybody that right straight off the bat. <laughs> but that's how I learn too. That's how I find some cool stuff. So I'm not, but it's nice to have friends that care. <laughs> yeah. I appreciate that. I'm always gonna be okay. But thank you. I'm just using my paper towel, by the way. Wet paper towel. All right, this is very cool. I'm I'm gonna let this dry for a second, um, and I'm going to go take five minutes, five minutes, um, potty break. So if you guys wanna go get something to drink, go potty, whatever it is, please come back and we'll keep working. Um, and I'll see you back in five minutes. Oh no, that was marvelous. Hey everybody. Aw, no, not stuffy. <laughs> Thanks, Sherry. She's my sis. <laughs> I love her. <laughs> yeah, this is so cool. I'm so excited about it. Gosh. I don't even know what we're gonna do on the inside, but I love all the weird colors that happen with the unicorn spit and the gesso and the other acrylic. So that's a cool combination, I have to remember. I just want to swim through underneath that tunnel. So let's let's put some highlight in the back and hopefully it'll draw us deeper into the painting. To do that is I'm gonna use just a little tiny brush and some of this bright pink ink. I love the ink. This is like what you use in your um, Airbrush. But just use it like ink. 
It's ink. <laughs> Put it in with your acrylics. Put it in with your unicorn spit. Put it in with your resin. Put it in everything. This is a different type of ink, but same. It's very saturated colors. That's why I like it. That's why I like ink. <laughs> okay, so before I do my ink, I want to do white. And I'm going to use the alcohol ink white. Just in the back. Just right in into that hole. To make it nice and bright. So I want whatever's coming out of there or hanging out in there to, to show up. So, I don't know if you guys can see that. It's just alcohol ink, white, right into that little hole in my cliff rock thing. And it's picking up those other colors, that other blue that's in there, which is working for me. So that's kind of cool. Drawings and poems to help bring smiles to people. Aw, a mermaid, Sherry. <laughs> That's so cool. You are a kindred spirit. It's all about people. I'm gonna put some white just on the other side of my bridge and just drag it across which turned yellow-ish, which that's fine. And put some right underneath of it too. I'm just guessing here and if it doesn't work, I'll go back over it with a darker color, but I have to try. I must know. Put some really bright yellows right here. Just right into that speckling. It can turn into something later. Right now, I'm not worried about it becoming something. I just want those extra little colors here and there. Put some pink down in there. Hoping that the pink will make it look like you're looking through it and the pink is going to be behind it. But I'm not sure. Yes, she writes beautiful songs. Beautiful. Very inspiring. I think I'm going to put some of that pink also right in front of it. So let me get some sort of a green, or maybe I'll just use my black and yellow to make that mossy green I like. Black, yellow, a little bit of blue. It's the it's the Hobbit green. It's absolutely fabulous. <laughs> and that's the green I've got right now. So it's darker. I'm gonna go ahead and put it right at the base of this. Maybe some weird little squigglies coming up. Let's start those on the on the front of the box though. Let's start the squigglies like right there. And that way we can keep them coming up.
See what I'm saying? It may or may not work. I'm not sure about that one. We'll see. It kind of went up too high, I think. So I'll probably end up stopping this one, then starting another one. Let's try that. Um, I don't like the way it just kind of, let me just explain it. <laughs> All right, so it's coming up on the front. That's pretty cool. But when it gets there, something happened. It, it went wrong. I don't know why. I just, it doesn't look right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop it and let the tip just come up. Then I'm going to do my line. Remember how we did the dark line? Just to stop something. So let's stop it right there. Okay. That will be another section of lump of dirt of some sort. And then we can continue with the green little stuff coming right from that clump. And I think that will actually turn out better. I don't know, we'll see. I still want that one connected. I just don't want it to go all the way it was. Pretty muddy, guys. It's pretty muddy. Taking some of that back out. Kind of a pretty greenish color. I like that. I'm gonna put it up, up in the top too. Whenever I find a color that for some reason works, um, I'll just go ahead and bring, even if it's not straight all the way across, just here and there some colors because you'll pick that up later as you look at it. Your mind's eye will pick it up. <laughs> Promise. Lots of promises. I'm gonna put some dark down here on the base of this rock, my speckling rock. And just drag it down into the box. Just gonna be another little layer of lumpy dirt of some sort under the water. Just add colors wherever you feel like it needs something. Doesn't even have to be a shape of anything in particular, just color, different colors, different shapes. And then when you start seeing something like, I just saw that this looked like a good rock or a potato, <laughs> whatever. Anyway, so down there, you can see you can add just different things and that pushes the archway back a little bit. Anything you can put in front of it makes your stuff that was already there get farther back, which is a good thing. You get more perspective, more depth that way. Well guys, this is where I'm gonna stop today. I appreciate everything you guys did, all of your visiting, all of the um, chatting it up and the gifts, the likes, the instructions. Um, I really appreciate everyone that's been here and playing and paint with me today. Um, and I'm going to hopefully do one session sometime like Friday or Saturday or Sunday, one of those, just an impromptu one to jump on and see if I can keep working with this. Thank you so much. <laughs> Love those flowers. <laughs> appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you, Randall. 
anyway, um, if I if I don't see you then, I'll see you hopefully Tuesday at 11.45. And remember, Cape Charles Art for the YouTube channel. If you would please subscribe, that would help a lot. I'd like to really get that thing going up and, up and running. And you guys, I so appreciate everything. Check out all of the artists that are on here uh, today because they're all fabulous. Follow them all. And I will check to see who is here and I will follow you if I haven't already. All right. So y'all have a beautiful Thursday and love and light. Bye.